We're answering gardening queries today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Dalak. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Jill and I are away at a flower show at the moment with the Potting Shed stage where we're giving talks and demonstrations. And one of the things I've been doing is answering lots of gardening questions. So I thought today I would just share some of the queries with you in a hope that it might help you. So first one, we've had quite a few questions on growing house plants, especially foliage plants and, and what to do with them at this time of the year in the summer. So I've just got a couple here, as you can see, a lovely calathea. I love the markings on the leaf of the calathea and they're always different from below. And then of course, we've got one of the monsteras there, the Swiss, Swiss cheese plants. So this time of the year, make sure they don't get too much sun on them. These are jungle plants. So if they're on a window that gets full sun, just take them back into the room a little bit or put them somewhere where they're out of direct sunlight um, and make sure they're watered well. In warm weather, they dry out quickly. But just a tip when you are watering, if you're watering when they're in these containers, make sure water doesn't sit in the bottom of that pot because otherwise it will rot the roots. So any surplus should always be tipped out. Feed regularly about once a fortnight through the growing season that will help to promote lovely lush new growth uh, and glossy foliage so you know there are lots of houseplant fertilizers available just a little bit of that in the water when you water about every two weeks and then the other thing that they love which makes them think they're back in the jungle is if you can give them a mist now and again um, so take them maybe onto a hard surface or even outside uh, bathroom and just with water just give them a mist and they will absorb that moisture into the leaf, keeps them cool, stops the dust forming, and it just freshens them up. So you can do that, you know, on a really, really regular basis to keep them happy and growing. Also had quite a few questions on how to keep plants flowering, all sorts of plants. Um, and I've got a fuchsia down here. Um, and a good example, if you've got anything like fuchsias or pelargoniums or petunias growing in pots, then the secret is to deadhead on a regular basis. Um, so as soon as the flowers start to go, you would just go across and pick them up. And we need to do that probably a couple of times a week. And um, with a fuchsia, this is the flower bud here. And if I look down here, you can see these as well. These are the seed pods forming where the flowers haven't been taken off. Whereas these here, are new flower buds. So any of these seed pods should also be taken off because if you don't, that will trigger to the plant that it's produced seed and the flowering will slow down. So just pick over them on a regular basis. Also makes them look so much better. If you've got plants like this growing in the garden, this is a herbaceous perennial. This is one of the um, hardy salvias, salvia caradonna, and this is the pink form normally they've got a bluey purple flower absolutely beautiful these spires the bees love them so great for pollinators now we can see there's lots of buds coming on this and we've got the main spire here and what they tend to do is if I just hold that there you can see we've got the first flower that would be this central one and then we get side shoots with this so these are difficult to actually pinch with your finger so you're going to need a little pair of snips of some sort and although it hasn't finished, I'll show you, once this central one has finished, that's growing up there, once all those flowers have gone, then you can snip that out. Just get your little snips in there, if I can hold it still and snip, that would go. And then that puts the energy into these side shoots. Once that's gone, I would trim that down to here, which I'll do now. And then what we can see there are some little side shoots growing and they will grow up and they will produce more flowers later on in the summer. So you can really prolong the flowering with these. Um, and then of course, at the end of the year, the whole thing dies down, but it is important to do that snipping. If we don't, you'll get lots of um, dead flower heads, which look quite attractive, but you won't get any new flowers. So I like to keep them flowering at least until September with those. We've also had some queries about what can you sow in the garden at this time of the year in the way of vegetables and salads. Well, when it comes to salads, there's so much because we can keep sowing salads right the way through into autumn because they're quite fast growing. So all the different lovely lettuces and herbs and spinaches and, and rocket, all of these we can still be sowing now. 
and a really good way to grow them uh, is to grow them in containers and this is ideal if you've not got a big garden or you haven't got a dedicated veg plot you know you've got a patio or a balcony then sow them in containers of, of any type they don't need to be very deep just a little bit of multi-purpose compost in there sow the seed thinly lightly cover it and water them and to help them germinate put them somewhere cooler in a shady part of the garden out of direct sunlight they will grow so much better and then when they're growing you can bring them out uh, into sort of a, a more light, a lighter position where there's more light and this is some spinach that's only been sown about five weeks and these are lovely little baby spinach leaves now and you just pick these off as and when you want them and these will keep going for weeks and weeks little tip get two or three pots or bowls like this and sow one and then when these seedlings are an inch or two tall sow another one and then another one a few weeks later and then you get that succession so you've got um, plenty to pick right the way through till late autumn early winter time so something you can be doing other ones we've had are tomatoes and this is a tomato uh, a bush tomato or basket tomato um, but we've been asked about when do you feed them because people have been saying their fruits aren't developing very well well this is one called tumbling tom this is one we sowed back on pots and trowels in March and if you want to see that video you can have a look on YouTube how we were sowing them and you can see the tomato fruits are developing on this we've got bags of flowers on it this is a naturally bushy plant, um, so you don't do any pinching out, unlike the ones in my greenhouse that I grow as tall plants and remove the side shoots. This one just gets on with it. And it's growing in a, about a 10 inch there, 25 centimeter pot uh, that we could hang up outside. The secret is keep them well watered, never let them dry out. That's really important. So we don't want to overwater, but the compost should always feel moist and you can feel the compost there. It's just nice and moist which is what they like. And the other thing is on a weekly basis, we need to feed with a high potash fertilizer. And this is one we're using from Plant Grow, which is made from plant extract. So it's totally organic <clears throat> and it's got a high uh, potash content. And the potash will help the fruits develop, but more importantly, ripen. So you get super ripe, tasty fruits later on. So water and feed. And if you get any yellow leaves that do develop later on in the season, you know, just take them off it's not a problem any lower ones you can snap them off like that and they can be put into the compost bin and finally we've had quite a few queries from people with agapanthus um, because the cold snap we had in the winter that came very suddenly has damaged a few people's the ones planted in the garden so they're growing but probably not flowering as well as they should do they will recover as long as they're growing and what I'm saying to people is feed them this is the time to build up the plant for next year um, if you feed them again with a high potash tomato fertilizer that will encourage them to be strong it induces winter hardiness to get them through the winter but more important it causes it encourages the little flower buds down there in the base of the plant to grow and then next year you'll get wonderful flowers like these here on your agapanthus so feed 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 and they will look absolutely great so hopefully that's just giving you a few tips for plants that you've got in your garden and might help with a few queries that you've got so what I'm going to do now is just have a wander around this floral marquee and before it gets busy with the public, just admire some of the amazing plants that are growing in there.
Well, thank you for watching Pots and Charles. We'll be back again soon doing more jobs in the garden. So we'll see you then. Bye. Thank you.